This video is on absolute value inequalities. We're going to be solving these inequalities and then we're going to graph them on a number line. This example right here, we have five is less than the absolute value of x plus one, which is less than five. Now, because we have two values on here, on the outsides, this actually is already automatically an and problem in the end, but we have to separate them into two different types of, of absolute values because we will also have and and ors going on as well. But the overall one, this is actually an and problem all the way through. So then we want to find the overlap of whatever we end up having. What we want to do is break them up with the absolute values. So the absolute value with the five needs to go together. So we'll have five is less than the absolute value of x plus one, absolute value. We also want to know that the absolute value goes with the seven, so I'm gonna break that up and put it over here. So we have the absolute value of x plus one, absolute value is less than seven. Now I'm gonna focus on these two as two different types of problems, so I'm really having two completely different problems going on here. So I'm gonna focus on this one in blue first. The absolute value is over here, it is isolated now. This is actually, the absolute value is still great or because you wanna say this aspect first, you can rewrite this and make it look um, the way it, we normally want it to look, kinda of like this one. But this absolute value is bigger than the five. So this is a great or so this blue one is going to be an or problem. So I'm going to separate them. I'm going to write the x plus one first. So the x plus one is again greater than that positive five because the absolute value is allowed to be bigger than a positive five. So that's good. Positives are, can be bigger than positive five. Then the other one will be that x plus one is less than that negative five because we want to flip the inequality and we have to change the sign. So now to solve this, this will be x is greater than, subtract the one, four, or x is going to be less than negative six. So that's the blue, but we want to finish all the way before we go to our number line. So in my pink, I'm going to do this absolute value is isolated, it's less than seven, so this is an and problem here. So I'll have the x plus one is less than seven, and the x plus one is greater than the negative seven. So we're gonna solve this out. We'll have x is less than, subtract the one, six, and x is gonna be greater than, subtract the one, negative eight. So here is where it gets a little complicated when we have to draw our number line. Because the overall problem is an and, we cannot shade until we know exactly what to shade. So on our number line, we do have four different numbers. Your smallest is the negative eight, then we have negative six, then we have four, then we have six. So I'm actually going to look at the, the blue first. I'm gonna put that kind of above the number line so I can see what's gonna happen. So the blue was an or problem. That means I wanna have it open at this positive four and open at that negative six. I want greater than four, so I would go towards the right, and less than negative six, I would go towards the left. So this is what I would shade for that if it was just this problem but it's not just the blue. I also have to look at the pink. So with the pink, I'm actually gonna do it underneath it. So I have it at that six. It's gonna be open at that six, and then it's also gonna be open at that negative eight. But this one was an and problem, so it should be between these two values. So it's less than the six, but greater than that negative eight. So because we have two different colors here, we need to find the and. And means that they have to overlap. So we actually wanna know where the blue and the pink overlap because the overall problem was an and. So we want blue and pink to be there. So we actually have multiple sections. We have the section to the left of the negative eight 
in between, in between, in between, and all the way to the right. So we just got to look at our sections to see if we have both colors. So on this left section, we only have one color. We only have the blue. So this is not going to be good. At the eight, at the numbers, we want to see if we have the colors because we want, it is, um, if there's a circle there, we might want to use that circle. So at this negative eight, we actually have the pink circle and the blue part. So that means we can put a circle here because it has to be pink. It has to match with the pink circle. So if we had both solid circles, we could actually put the solid circle here. Then we have inside, in between these two numbers, we have pink and blue. That means I can shade in here, at least until we get to that negative six. Now at that negative six, I have a blue circle and a pink solid, so I can put a circle there and everything in between. Now in between the next set, I have pink, but no blue above it, so I can't shade here. At the four, I have a blue circle and solid pink, so I can put a circle here. The next section, I have blue and pink, so I can shade, so this is good. Then I look at my six, I have a pink circle and solid blue, so that means I can put my circle here and I can shade in between these two circles, because I knew I could shade there. Then on the far right, I have blue, but no pink, so I cannot shade over here. So this would be our answer. Now, it would be a little hard to write this in, in set notation, but it is possible. You would put that x is greater than negative 8, but less than negative 6, or x is greater than 4, less than 6. In interval notation, you would use the union for the or, and we would have it from open bracket, negative 8, comma, negative 6, open bracket, union, open bracket, 4, comma, positive 6, open bracket. That would be the actual interval notation. This would be our set notation without the x squiggle. So I would want to highlight the number line with the shading. The blue and the pink are to help us to know what to shade because we have so many different values. Then we can write it in set notation like this. So again, we had to understand that the original was an and problem altogether. So we had to find where the blue and the pink overlapped each other before we shaded. On this next example, we do not have the inequality isolated, so we do need to do that. So the first step is to add that one to the other side. So we'll have the absolute value of x plus 5 is less than, add the 1 is negative 7. So once it's isolated, now we have to check to see if this is possible. This value is supposed to be positive. A positive number less than a negative. That's not true. A positive number cannot be less than a negative. So this can't go further because of this part right here. An absolute value must be positive. Positive numbers cannot be less than negative. So I'm going to write a note. It is not possible for absolute value to be less than, which again means smaller, less than or smaller than a negative value. Remember, absolute values have to be positive. This, if I were to cover this up, my finger would have to be a positive number. Positive numbers cannot be smaller than negative. So that means that our answer is no solution. We don't have to do anything else with it. And again, we can write no solution as a zero with a slash through it. So this is our answer, no solution. So we don't have to separate them. We don't have to solve anything out. We don't have to shade anything. 
on this next one, number five, again, we have to isolate our absolute value before we can begin. We have to divide by negative two, so we'll have the absolute value of x plus three, absolute value. When we divide an inequality by a negative, the inequality has to flip, so this will become a great, greater than or equal to. And then we'll have six divided by negative two, which is a negative three. So again, we look to see if we can continue. So this number that I, I would cover up would be a positive. Positive number greater than a negative. Well, all positives are greater than a negative. So no matter what value I get here, it will automatically be greater than a negative. So we actually don't have to do anything else on this. We should know our answer. All positives are bigger than negatives. That has to be true. So what that means, since we have greater than or equal to a negative, all absolute values are bigger than negatives. All of them. So that's all answers. We can write a little note down here is absolute value must give a positive value. Therefore, a positive number or a positive value is always bigger than a negative. So if that's the case, our answer would actually be all real numbers. All real numbers. Because all values that we would to put into here, no matter what, would still be true. Any number we put in here. So if we put 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. Times negative 2 is negative 16. Negative 16 is smaller than 6. If I put in 100, that would be an absolute value of 103. Times a negative is a negative, smaller than 6. So even if I put in negative values, let's say negative 1, that would be a 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2, times negative 2 is negative 4, still smaller than that 6. So all real numbers, this would be. So we would have that fancy R. Now, for a number line, you actually, for a number line, you would draw your number line. And we need a number on there, so I'm just going to put like a zero there. All real numbers mean you actually shade everything. So I'm just going to draw shading with arrows pointing to the left and right, because everything is there. I don't have to put little circles or little dots or anything, because it's all there. Because our answer is all real numbers. If for a number line... For the no solution, for the no solution up here, the number line, I will just have my number line with the zero, like a number on it, a zero, with nothing shaded. This would actually be my solution. I would have nothing shaded. So you gotta always look back with absolute value equations. If you had absolute value equation equal to a negative, that can't happen. But with inequalities, if you have that negative, once it's isolated, if you have your negative, you have to look at what inequality you have. All absolute values are bigger than a negative, but no absolute values are smaller than a negative. So you have to definitely look to see when you have that negative, if it's possible. Same thing with zero, because all absolute values can be bigger than zero, and no absolute values can be smaller than zero. But you have to look for that equal to as well for zeros. So on this next example, number six, again, we're going to isolate. We need to add that seven to the other side. So we'll have absolute value 3x plus 4 is less than or equal to positive 14. The absolute value is isolated. So can a positive number be smaller than 14? Yes, it can. So we do actually want to continue this. We look at the inequality. This is less than, so this is an and inequality. So we would separate them. The 3x plus 4 stays the same always, less than or equal to that positive 14. 
and we'll also have that 3x plus 4, because inside stays the same. We'll, then we have to flip the inequality, become greater than or equal to the negative 14. And then we solve. So we'll have, subtract the 4, we'll have 3x is less than or equal to 10. Divide by 3, x is less than or equal to 10 over 3. On the other one, subtract the 4. So we'll have 3x is greater than or equal to negative 18. Divide by 3, x is greater than or equal to negative 6. So on our number line, we have a negative 6. We have a positive 10 over 3. Now, since this is an and problem, it should be in between. So we want the numbers that are smaller than the 10 over 3, so it would go to the left, and bigger than the negative 6, so it would go to the right. So it would shade in the middle. So we want closed on negative 6, closed on 10 over 3, and we do want everything in the middle. So again, our answer, you could write it out as negative 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 10 over 3. And don't forget the interval notation. Because we have a starting point and a stopping point, it's everything in between it. So we have close bracket, negative 6, comma, 10 over 3, close bracket. That would be our interval notation. Don't forget to highlight your solution. That includes the number line as well as the written out expression.